finally tonight, a progress report on New York City's efforts to improve its public schools. Our special correspondent for education, John Marrow, first sat down with Chancellor Joel Klein in 2002. He talked with him again at the start of this school year, and here is his report. We need somebody with intelligence. We need somebody that is innovative. It was just over three years ago that New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg took over the city's public schools and put this man in charge, former Assistant Attorney General and businessman Joel Klein. <laughs> Skeptics wondered how long Chancellor Klein would last. After all, New York City had seen 12 school chancellors come and go in 20 years. You're starting your fourth year. This is, uh, what, what does it feel like? Uh, I mean, you, you're an old-timer. It is. By the standards of this industry, I'm an old-timer. That's so funny. Uh, I think it's wonderful. I mean, I, I really, in a funny way, it seems like such a short time ago when we actually had our first interview. Uh, and yet a, a tremendous amount has happened. And I'm uh, very optimistic about doing four more years. Welcome. Welcome. You all excited? Welcome. Yes, I'm all excited. When Mayor Bloomberg, also a former businessman, appointed Joel Klein, some wondered whether two people with no background in education could run the New York City schools effectively. Public education, which has been run by educators for many generations, has not succeeded. And so I think you need a different approach. But, you know, you see it in L.A., you see it in Chicago, you see it in uh, San Diego, Philadelphia. There are many so-called uh, superintendents who are non-traditional which is, less felicitously put, means we're not educators. New York City is the largest public school system in the United States by far. About 80,000 teachers, more than 1,400 schools, and nearly 1.1 million students. How big is that? Only nine cities in the United States have that many people. Arthur Levine is president of Teachers College at Columbia University. Put New York City in, in a larger context. Are urban systems like New York and other large, are they governable? We don't know. The problem we have is no urban school system in America has ever been successfully turned around. The result is that we have the poorest schools in America in our cities for our majority of minorities and low-income students. When air moves... It's a huge challenge. Half of New York City's seventh graders cannot read at grade level. Graduation rates are low, and the dropout rates are high. I look at the school system, and I think, this is going to be a work in progress. We need to make this our number one priority as a city uh, for the next decade. Eric Joya is a member of the city council. His district has some of the most overcrowded schools in the city. Joya questions whether public schools in his district are as strong as when he attended them 20 years ago. So you're telling me in your high school there's not even enough space for you to sit down and have lunch? There, there's a little cafeteria, but everybody goes out because it's so small. At least you got a cafeteria. You don't have a cafeteria in your school? No. When I looked at PS11, the place I went, and I saw children literally uh, in shower rooms going to school, I had to ask myself, are we fulfilling our obligation to ensure that every child in New York City is getting a first-rate education? Um, and I'm afraid that answer is not yes. But if test scores are any indication, things are apparently starting to get better. Last year, reading and math scores in grades 3 and 5 went up on average about 13 percent. Our test scores uh, have gone up in an unprecedented way. Our graduation rates are up. They're higher than they've ever been. They're still terrible. Of course, but you, you, know, you can't change this overnight. I, I, you know, when I started out, I was the one who pointed out how unsatisfactory they are, and I still think they're unsatisfactory, but they're moving in the right direction. After stagnating at 50% for something like almost 20 years, in the last couple of years, they've gone up almost 4%. Is that enough? Of course not, but it shows that direction arrows are all in the right direction. Klein and Mayor Bloomberg have taken some major steps. With state approval, they replaced the school board with an advisory group. Klein adopted a citywide core curriculum for all but the best performing schools and replaced some large high schools with small ones. Since 2003, 178 new schools have opened. But the most important thing, I think, is we've moved this from a culture of excuse to a culture of performance. An organization that has an excuse-based culture will continue to be a failing organization. Klein's approach meant firing some people. 
I've removed quite a few principals who were non-performing principals. That's something that didn't happen and doesn't often happen in public education. You, you can, what, 45? Last year alone, 45, yeah. That, that made a lot of noise. Karen Martin. <laughs> Using $69 million in private funds, he created the Leadership Academy for training new principals who were then placed in the city's most troubled schools. You're gonna transform schools in New York City and in doing so, change the lives of kids. 10, 11, 12. Chancellor Klein and Mayor Bloomberg ended what's called social promotion, the practice of advancing students to the next grade regardless of their academic standing, even though some research indicates that students who are held back are more likely to drop out. It doesn't do anyone any favors to send unprepared students up the line to the next grade. Those days, I think we all agree, are over. You're finished. This past summer, more than 9,000 third and fifth graders attended mandatory summer school. About half of them did not pass and are being held back this school year. We've got kids in the eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade who are three, four, five years behind when we got here. That's a product of social promotion. We're changing that, John, but we can't change it overnight. Andino, come here, Andino. Principal Amy Andino, a recent graduate of the Leadership Academy, thinks one challenge the Department of Education faces is getting everyone on board. The biggest problems I see that, that New York City or the Education Department in New York City faces is the buy-in. I think that parents still need to feel comfortable in this. I think they feel supported, but a lot of parents, whether it be a language barrier, whether it be a status barrier, whatever the case may be, are still not feeling welcome into our schools. Mm -hmm. really and it's not just the parents. Yeah. According to Joya, it's also the teachers. I speak to teachers pretty frequently, and I don't want to say they're disgruntled, but their morale has been sapped because I think there's a real feeling that the mayor doesn't really appreciate what they do every day and the struggles they have. What do you recommend? The first thing I would do if I was the chancellor of the school system is make peace with my common allies, and that's the teachers and principals who actually go out there and educate children. Making peace will not be easy. Teachers Union President Randy Weingarten addressed her members at a rally recently. But you deserve a fair contract, and you deserve it now, and you earned a fair contract, and because of our unity and determination, we will get a fair contract. Tell me what's going on right now. I mean, you haven't had a contract for quite it's a ridiculous. while. How long Two and has a half it been? years oh. without a raise. The longest ever. Do teachers feel like they're the enemy? Yes. Not from the public, but teachers feel that the mayor and the chancellor see them as the enemy. You know, look, I like Joel Klein. I think he's smart. I think he's tenacious. I think he wants to do the right thing by kids. I think what ends up happening is that he looked at the teachers and the union as his adversaries as opposed to his allies. For the union, the big issue is money. Veteran teachers in some surrounding suburbs earn about $20,000 more a year. The union wants teachers to be able to do their jobs better and to have a bigger piece of the economic pie so that their members can, you know, live and thrive in their members' families. Klein wants other changes, longer teaching hours, less reliance on seniority, and an easier way to terminate bad teachers. What happens in a school system like New York is teachers don't get terminated. They get passed through the system. Oftentimes, they end up in schools with the greatest challenges. If you have a diagraph in the work, what are you going to do to the diagraph? Klein also wants to change the way teachers are paid. Right now, salaries are based on educational background and time on the job. He wants to pay the best teachers more. Do you know any organizations that run that way except for uh, an organization like ours? In other words, somebody who gets paid whether you work hard or you don't work very hard, whether your kids do well or they don't do well, that's a system in which oftentimes people say, well, look, I'm going to get paid the same. I said very publicly, let's take the 200 worst performing schools and let's create an enterprise zone and let's pay everyone who goes to those hardest to staff schools more than we pay people in the rest of the school system. And what did the mayor and Joel Klein say? They rejected that proposal. I don't want a zone. I've got a school system run. When you say 200 of our toughest schools, I've got 
all of my schools in varying degrees of toughness. We don't need an experiment. We need to educate our kids. Chancellor Klein wants more changes than the union seems willing to give, which raises the possibility of a teacher strike. The next time he'll get a hug is when we have a contract. Do you expect a strike? Look, nobody wants a strike. No one. A strike is bad for kids. It's bad for the city. It's bad for the school teachers. But at one point or another, it may come to that. You cannot rule that out. Because it's also an election year, schools will be in the spotlight more than ever, according to Arthur Levine. The beginning of this year is going to be really hard for both Joel Klein and the mayor. The reason is we're going into a mayoralty election in which the mayor has said, judge me on the basis of the quality of the schools. It's going to be an interesting year. It's going to be a fascinating year. I'm glad I'm not Joel Klein. <laughs> Do you ever wake up in the morning and want to pull the colors, covers up over your head and say, I don't think I want to go to work today? I, I, it's not like that, but there, there are certainly days and there are days in this job, and there, not everyone's a joyful. I'm a pretty optimistic guy with a clear sort of sense of mission about this. You know, I believe in the work we're doing. So for all those reasons, I don't want to kid you and say there are not times when I say to myself, why this? <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's tempestuous. It's uh, difficult. Uh, there are a lot of challenges. Um, but it's what I love doing. Joel Klein's job could get easier in the not-too-distant future. In a 2003 landmark court decision, New York City won $14.8 billion from the state. However, the state is appealing. If and when the money arrives, Klein plans to build new schools, strengthen the curriculum, and implement merit pay for teachers.